Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with another tutorial for MassiveSynth.com. First, if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please sign up at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Toots, that's T-U-T-S. So in today's video, it's going to be a tip and trick style tutorial. I'm going to show you how to utilize the save MIDI function in Massive and to create your own custom MIDI maps for specific types of sounds. So I have a lead slash pluck, pluck pulled up right now. Right, and I worked up that little progression, that little ditty, just so I could show you what's going on with that sound. And the cool thing with Massive is it's really easy to create your, I call them MIDI maps. I don't know if that's the proper term, but um, let's just roll with that. So I saw a couple tutorials on YouTube a while back where the uh, person giving the tutorial got really in depth with how to set these up. And they did it mainly with the DAW, like routing the things that you wanted to and having your DAW remember where it is, as opposed to having Massive remember. And so I think it's a lot easier to do this in Massive as opposed to your DAW, because then it's different for every every program, whether it's Pro Tools, Ableton, Logic, etc. So right now, I have eight macros on this sound. It's a three oscillator sound. It's a lead. But I have the cutoff turned down, so it sounds very pluckish right now. Well, I have, to the to the left of me, I have a couple keyboards. And the reason I'm pointing that out is most keyboards nowadays, US MIDI keyboards, USB MIDI keyboards, they come with at usually at least some rotary knobs and sliders. Most of them come with eight rotary knobs and eight sliders. So I have a impulse, an ovation impulse, and it has eight rotary, rotary knobs and eight sliders. Uh, I have a MPK 49, same setup. And it's cool because you can, you can assign almost any knob or slider in Massive to your physical sliders. And there's tons of reasons why this is useful in my opinion. The main two I would say would be, it's a lot easier to control your macros. You can really quickly and easily do automation edits without having to do automation. You can just perform them. It's a huge difference, I think. And actually third is you can create custom MIDI maps for certain types of sounds. So for a lead, you might set up to be having a parameter assigned like an envelope or your cutoff or your wave tool position. And then for you can make one for dubstep sounds. So I have one set up for wobbles where I have the LFO amps set up to my MIDI keyboard. And all you have to do is load up those MIDI maps inside a massive and you have access to them. You don't have to do anything in your DAW. So for instance, right now, So right then, I was just moving around some sliders and some rotary knobs, but the main one of importance with the sound is I have a slider tied to my cutoff. So if I wanted to, I could really easily record in the automation of this filter opening up as it plays. So I'll do that right now. So if I play this now, this down. Piece of cake, right? I didn't have to do any, I didn't have to open up my automation. I didn't have to go to uh, massive. I didn't have to select filter, cut off all that, which is what it's doing. Uh, you can see there, there's the automation information. It just did it because I had it set up to record like that. Piece of cake, really quick, fun to do. I actually enjoy doing it like that more than doing the pencil tool and giving myself a case of carpal tunnel syndrome. So I'm going to show you how you can set something like this up. Let's mute this, and we'll go to a new instance of Massive altogether. And let's load up um, a little bit of pulse, a pluck. All right, so if I start to move some of my rotary knobs here, I'm moving my first rotary knob. 
Nothing's happening. I'm moving all my sliders at once. Nothing's happening on my MIDI keyboard. So let's set this up. So let's go to the first macro. Right click or control click and hit MIDI learn. And now I'm going to assign this to my first rotary. You can assign this to anything you want on yours, but I'm moving my rotary knob and you can see the little tick mark on this first macro is moving. So now that's assigned. Then go over to your second macro, hit MIDI learn or whatever parameter you want and then move, move that knob and you will assign it to that physical piece on your hardware. Okay, so right now we have we have the first two set up. Let me make sure I get this right. Okay, so we have we have uh, first my first rotary knob is my first macro, second rotary knob is my second macro, and let's go up to the wave tilt position, and I'll hit MIDI learn, and I will assign this to my third rotary. All right, and then we'll assign the cutoff to the fourth rotary knob. Okay, and now what you're gonna do, go up to File, go to Options, go to MIDI. This is where you can save your MIDI maps. And you're going to do New. I'm going to call this Tutorial, because I'll probably, I'll end up deleting this one, most likely. I'll just call it Tut, because I'm too lazy to type out Tutorial. So we'll call it Tut, and then hit Save. Well now you can see the current setup says Tut, as opposed to my default, or whatever you have it set to, like here's my machine, uh, you can your yours will say something different if you have different controllers, but right now it's tut. okay. So if I move my first rotary knob, which we assigned to my first macro, it's still working. Second, right, thirds at attached to the wave tail position. Okay, well let's see how this works when we do a new instance of massive, which is the uh, I guess the big test here. So I'm going to make a new instance of massive, and I'm moving my first rotary knob, and nothing's happening. And I think this is why people start to meddle with the preferences of their DAW. Well, it's really simple. Go to File, go to Options, go to MIDI, hit Load, or I'm sorry, click on the one you want to load. So I'm going to load up TUT, or the tutorial one, and hit Load, and watch where it says my current setup. Now it says TUT. All right, so now my first rotary knob is moving my first macro, even though it's not assigned. The second one, my third is moving the wave tail position, and the fourth is attached to the cutoff of my first filter. So it's really easy to set these up and recall them. And I would suggest making a couple, or if about three or four, one for leads, one for plucks, one for pads, and one for your wobbles or dubstep presets, or whatever you guys end up producing. Because then when you want to load up something for your lead, like let's say I load up a uh, lead sound right now, instead of a pluck, which we just did. So let's load up, um, what, it, what, it, what is this? All right, so let's say I want to have a control over my parameters that I typically tweak when I'm using leads. Well, I'm going to go to File, go to Options, MIDI, go to click on Lead Control, which is what I named it, and then hit Load. And boom, now I have all eight macros and all eight sliders set up ready to go. So you can see here is my cutoff one. So it's that easy, it's that simple, and I think it's a great tool to make massive an extension of your, your creative output as opposed to just being something that you're tweaking with the mouse and keyboard and things like that in your DAW. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't checked out MassiveSynth.com in a while, head on over there. Tons of cool things, Massive-related. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.